Okay, here's another review type example from double integrals. We're asked to consider the following double integral, sketch the region of integration, and evaluate the double integral by uh, using polar coordinates. Okay? Now remember, with polar coordinates, the idea with these um, integrations is to simplify things. You're making a change of variables, basically, that simplifies the uh, calculations involved. Okay, so we're asked to sketch the region of integration. All right, well, um, looking at my limits of integration and the way the um, differentials lie, x will, will be between y and root 1 minus y squared, and y will be between 0 and 1 half. Okay, so what, what I like to do is sketch the bounding curves for my region, and then determine the, um, the region of integration. Okay, so let's look at the um, y equals 0 and y equals 1 on uh, root 2. Well, they're just two parallel lines looking like this. Okay, so the y equals 0 is just the x-axis. Okay, now the line x equals y is going to look something like that. And what about the, the curve x equals root 1 minus y squared? That'll be something like um, the top, uh, the, the right hand side of a circle. Okay? So um, if you consider x equals root 1 minus y squared, you know, just let's just sort of break the rules a minute, square both sides, you get x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's a circle with a center at the origin, radius 1. Okay, so if I wanted to plot the... Uh, let's bring you up a bit. Okay, a bit of a badly drawn picture. But hopefully you get the idea. So this now is the curve x equals root 1 minus y squared. Okay. So what do we want here? We want the region uh, of integration. We want to determine that. Well, y is between these two, and x is greater than y but less than this curve. So if I draw a horizontal line, because x is between two functions here, I see that this horizontal line enters the re uh, this particular region at y and leaves at root 1 minus y squared. So actually this is our region of integration. Okay, now if I sort of move this up and down the y-axis to, to trace out the whole part of this curve, I'll have to go from 0 to 1 on root 2, which is my limits of integration again. Okay? Now, if you just wanted to confirm that 1 on root 2 and this line, x equals y, actually connect at at the point on the circle, that's not too hard to do. You can just do that using a little bit of algebra. Okay? You can also think of it as a, just forming a little right angled triangle. From here to here will be one on, well, this length is one. Okay? So this length has got to be one on root two, and this length has got to be one on root two. Okay? Just using Pythagoras. So it's not too hard to, to justify that the horizontal line one on root two and the line x equals y all meet up at a point on the circle. Okay, we're asked to evaluate the double integral by applying polar coordinates. 
So remember with polar coordinates, Essentially, polar coordinates involve an angle, theta, and a length to the um, origin. So, if I say have a point P, then in the xy plane, that point P has a distance to the origin and an angle, a positive angle to the uh, an angle to the positive OX axis. All right, so the idea is to somehow describe this, the shaded region, in terms of polars. So if I look closely, what happens is to, if I start at um, the positive OX axis and I rotate, how much of a rotation do I need to do to trace out omega? Well, a quarter of a turn. Okay, yep. So, I guess my omega, uh, my um, uh, theta will be between 0 and pi on 4 because it's a quarter of a turn. Now, think about how, f well, like the distance from each of these points to the origin, well, the distance will always be between 0 and 1. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is replace these limits of integration with my new limits, which are just constants, which are nice and simple, and then replace x with r cosine theta, y with r sine theta, and dA with r dr d theta. Now, by the dA there, I mean dx dy or dy dx. I haven't specified the order. All right, so let's just call this, say, I. All right, so um, let's write down my new limits of integration. Now, usually I put the thetas on the outside. It doesn't matter which way you do it for this case. Let's replace Y with R sine theta, so I get 3 R sine theta, and I replace, in this case, dx dy with this. Okay? Now don't forget that this little factor of R is there. Students forget this all the time. Sometimes they even put it in and then forget that it's there. They don't multiply through, okay? It's easy to forget. Okay, well, um, I could integrate in the normal way now, but I can actually break this up into the product of two integrals because I've basically got a function of r times a function of theta and all of these things are constant. So actually, I can simplify this a little bit more. Now this can't be done with all integrals but it can be done when you have the product of two functions of one variable and constant limits of integration. Okay, so if you integrate the first integral, just like you would with any um, single integral, you'll get something like uh, minus cosine theta. And if you integrate this, you'll get r to the power th uh, 3. So if you just sub in then, the first, uh, uh, th th this one's going to give you 1, so it's all about this um, interval, uh, this uh, uh, value here, when you plug in, you'll get minus 1 on root 2 minus minus 1.
Okay? Now, if you don't like this particular way of splitting it up, you don't have to do it that way. You could just, you know, integrate with respect to R and then on the inside and then move on to the outside. That's fine. 